coming out. Uh, my name's Adam. I'm a technology integration coach. Let's see. Let's see. I'm a technology integration coach uh, from the Cutler Rossi Joint Unified School District. I'm in Central California. So when you think California, do not think the palm trees and the beaches of Hollywood or the uh, cable cars and tall buildings and great weather of San Francisco. If I were to drop you guys all uh, in the middle of California where I live, you'd still think you're in Texas. Okay, <laughs> similar, uh, similar culture, very rural, uh, a lot of agriculture. Um, we don't do brisket in Central California, we do tri-tip. So I'm a little partial, but hey, I, enjoy, I just enjoy food. So uh, yeah, that's kind of where I live. I'm about, we're in the middle of everything. I'm in the shadow of the giant sequoias, about 45 minutes away, hour from Yosemite. I can be at the beach in two hours, so. Great little uh, centralized location. Just a little bit about the district where I, I work. Um, it's about 90, it's 95% Hispanic. The vast majority of my students are the children of migrant farm workers. We're about 4.5% Filipinos. And I think in our graduating class this year, we had two white kids. So uh, I get them on the, get them on one hand each year. So that's kind of the uh, population I serve. Uh, very, uh, very impoverished, but you know what? They're they're, uh, they're doing some great things and they're, it's to see what the innovation that comes out of them is, uh, is amazing. So a little bit about me, uh, again, my name's Adam. I'm, a, I'm the proud father of those three little angels there, uh, Ashley, uh, Ariel, and Andrina. Can't wait to uh, see them uh, tomorrow when I get back, but that's me. I'm a Google certified trainer. And uh, I'm gonna share with you today some of my ideas. This is called the Cardinal Innovation Center. It's a, um, a virtual and physical learning space and I, I created this, it's, uh, it's like, as I'm going to talk about in a second, it's like an onion on steroids. And it's uh, using the Google suite of apps um, in, a, in a lot of different ways. So it, it's a lot for one person just to do for their class, but you can uh, pick and choose some of the ideas that I've, uh, I'm going to be uh, talking about today. So again, uh, while you're here, uh, share all your learnings on social media using these hashtags, Google for EDU. This is a Google session here, ISD17. Um, my hashtag I created for uh, the Innovation Center is the Can I Kick It uh, um, hashtag. It's, uh, I know it's spelled wrong, but if you guys can figure it out. Uh, CV Tech Talk is an original hashtag that I created. I'm a co-founder of. We do a weekly Twitter chat uh, every Wednesday at 7 Pacific, talking about technology and pedagogy. We'll be doing a live session t tonight, 7 Central Time, in the, um, in the lobby of the La Quinta across the street. So join us in for some tweet and talk. So feel free to use our hashtag. So Cardinal Innovation Center. This is kind of the story I like to tell when I uh, explain this. Uh, it reminds me of the, uh, the story of the tortoise and the hare. And we all know how it ends up. But I think we know what was the, tor well, the hare's downfall. He got complacent. We all have those students in our classrooms who are, they're ahead. They get it quickly. But too often we pander to the lowest common denominator and they get complacent the same way that the hare did in the race, and they fall behind and make mistakes. I see it all the time in the, in the community where I work with these kids who are really, really bright. They're, they're great, but they're not challenged. We're pandering too quickly to the lowest common denominator, and these kids who need to be challenged, who need to be empowered, and need a place to innovate, they get left behind, and they end up becoming behavior problems. And I've seen kids like this, they end up failing, dropping out of high school, and it breaks my heart. So that's kind of uh, one of, the, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the impetus behind this. Um, I know it was a competition, a race here, but I can't help but think, you know, I'm pretty Google-centric, so I, I like, uh, I'm, I'm more about collaborating than competing. Why couldn't this have been a competitive collaboration or a collaborative competition? Because they both have strengths that they can share. So again, the Innovation Center here is, uh, is about drawing upon the strengths of, of all learners. So this is what I call an idea smash. Like I said, it's an onion on steroids. There's many, many, many layers to this. And more than I, I can't really get into detail of all of them, but I'm gonna give you just a quick preview of many of these layers. So I've been thinking about this all the time. I mean, I dream about it. I think about it all the time in my district. Uh, thanks be to God, we'll be getting, is getting behind this project this August. Now we get to uh, pretty much full time do the Cardinal Innovation Center. So let's talk about this for a second. It all came about because I've, I've been able to stand on the shoulders of giants. People who have mentored me, inspired me. Many of them are 
in this, in this conference right now. I've taken what they've learned by following them on social media, picking their brains, and just going to conferences and taking all these ideas from these great people, and now I'm synthesizing it myself and putting this together. So I, again, stand on the shoulders of giants, especially uh, a lot of great big educators who are big on, on social media, they're published, they're presenting here. Feel free to go up to them. Don't, don't be intimidated. I, I wasn't, I went up to them. At first I was a little kind of starstruck, kind of a fanboy. I went and I, once I went up to them and saw how engaging they were, they shared their information and it's really inspired me for this project. So let's, let's do a little case study here. We have uh, Mrs. Cruz, sixth grade ELA history teacher at our middle school here. She was pulling her hair out. Her kids were not engaged. They were consuming content, not creating it. So I told her, hey, Michelle, you need to kick it. So we got together. We started off with some, some four C's lesson planning. And after some, some intense lesson planning, we changed her, the whole paradigm of her teaching. And all of a sudden, as you can see in her face, oh my god, my kids are now creating content, not consuming. They're actually engaged in the work. They're empowered. They're taking ownership of the work. So again, the uh, <clears throat> Innovation Center starts with a pl empowered planning, which leads to empowered teaching. And then the result is empowered learning. So here's my inspiration. I'm probably uh, kind of pandering to Google a little bit, but I love this movie. You ever seen the internship? God, I love that movie. It's great. And uh, what really got me, I'm seeing the scene where they're actually in Google and the, the team's collaborating. I saw that, I'm like, I need to, I pulled out Google Keep, I started taking notes during the movie. I'm like, I need to take some notes. I, I want to create that kind of culture and flexible learning space, a physical learning space like that within my classroom. So, great movie. So here's kind of a little schematic of what it looks like. Now, this is kind of the beta, the beta um, version of it, but uh, as you can see there, we have, there is no front of the room. There is a center. I actually have a movable stage. I'll show you a picture of it. I'm going to chalkboard paint it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but we have like a, some, this is kind of what I call my arena configuration. Uh, we have uh, all the student desks are on, on casters. Uh, we have some that are raised, some that are lower. The, the, the inner uh, rectangle, this concentric uh, rectangle is, uh, is a little bit lowered, and the kids are on regular chairs. The outside, is they're raised. And they have, um, they're using bar stools. So well, somebody asked me about, well, kids are gonna be uncomfortable. I'm like, good, I don't want them sitting down. I want them to get up. I want them to get up. So uh, we have two 70 inch flat screen TVs. Uh, if some of you are thinking about, about that, you're like, well, we can't afford that. You know, I was very fortunate to have a good friend of mine donate those to me. And we use uh, Chromecast to, uh, to, and uh, Chromebit to, uh, to mirror, so we, we can have uh, multiple things on each display. We have a Chromebook cart, uh, as you can see there, we have uh, movable uh, toolboxes for all the student uh, and teacher supplies, they can, it's all mobile. So I'm, right now, I'm actually working on some different configurations other than just the arena configuration. Um, one of the coolest things I, I found on Amazon for about 40 bucks were USB bed risers. So there are bed risers, but one of them has a plug and two uh, plugs and two USBs. So what I do, I can go to any student desk, put them on the risers, and I have my own teacher standing desk, and I have power. Because I, I have enough space in here uh, for 36 kids. I don't think any of my classes are that big, so I can take any desk and make it mine. So it's, it's very dynamic. So here's some pictures of a kind of a beta version right now, so, um, finishing up the final touches here. But you can see on the top left, you see the, uh, the mobile stage. That actually was a a platform my dad kept in the garage for his sauna, and then he sold it on my dad. That's perfect, I'm gonna put that as a stage in my room. Perfect, so I put some locking catchers on there. So kids, I work with teenagers, we all know one of the, state, one of the parts of adolescent development is kids, they feel like they're on stage. I'm gonna put that to work. So if they're gonna be talking in class, put them on stage. Some of those kids really, they'll run with it. Uh, you see in the middle there, we have the, the makerspace materials. Uh, over on the right, you see my standing desk. I just pulled a student desk and made it my standing desk for, for that period. Uh, we have a green screen over there. Uh, I know the curtain rod's a little crooked. I didn't fix that, so old picture. And you can see uh, the uh, 15 bucks at Walmart. I get those, those uh, bar stools. So again, this is uh, really uh, revamping your, your learning space on a budget. So when I first came up with the Cardinal Innovation Center, I wanted to really incorporate the ISTE standards. So I want my kids being knowledge constructors. I want them to be innovative designers. 
computational thinker, so that they really need to find and choose a tool that best meets the task. It could be using one of the one of the one of the apps in Google Suite, or it can be no tech at all. It could be pencil and paper, whatever works for them. I want them to be global collaborators, using things like Google Hangouts and other methods to uh, connect with people across the world. I definitely want them to be creative communicators, where they start building their uh, their digital footprint with social media, and especially a good way to start with a push in our district for writing, with blogging, using Blogger. So that's kind of what the physical space looks like. Let's talk about the virtual space. You can go to the website, cardinalinnovationcenter.org. Uh, you can uh, <clears throat> simply go to that, to that URL or scan the QR code and see uh, what this uh, work in progress is, looks like so far. Give me a second to scan that. Now, when you, uh, if you're looking at me, looking at the website, uh, I have a couple drop down menus a teacher portal and a student portal. And feel free to just go browse through it. It's a lot for one classroom teacher to do. I'm a tech coach, so I'm on assignment all day. So I'll, I'll kind of explain what, how this is going to work. Um, but feel free to pick and choose things that works for just your class. Mine's kind of a more global, global uh, vision here. But for you, or you're just a classroom teacher, there's a lot of things I'm sure that you can pick and choose that will work within uh, your class. So here's the home page. Okay, as you can see up there, we have some drop down menus. We have the uh, student portal and the teacher portal. So let's take a look at some of these things here. First, one of my favorite things I put it first is the Blogger Cafe. I remember when I got to ISTE, I, I saw they have a Blogger's Cafe. I'm like, I wonder if I'm doing some trademark infringement here. <laughs> but uh, Blogger Cafe is simply the kids, uh, the innovation center, I have it hours 7.30 to 4.30. The kids can come before school, during lunch, and after school. And I want them to blog. I don't want them to blog in the blogger cafe about what they did in class. I want them to blog about whatever they want to. We, if we want to get kids writing, they should start writing about things that interest them. So um, if you scroll down on this page, you can see that there's a lot of different genres. And I've uh, created uh, a lot of different uh, uh, links on there where every time a student or, or even a teacher can join, they put their, uh, they put their blogger address and link it to their name and it'll talk about whatever they want to talk about. So over there, uh, we have students and teachers there who have already started. And again, this is a work in progress. We have one of the best students I ever had. She's our valedictorian there, down on the left. Her name is Natalie. She's very, very passionate about politics. I could, I, she's the only student I ever had that I could have a, like, a grown-up grown uh, political discussion about. And she knew her stuff. She could back it up, which is great. So I told her, Natalie, I want you to be the first student in the Blogger Cafe. And she wrote, as I knew, about politics. She, uh, if, you, if you see that, you can probably tell her uh, political views are very obvious. But she's great. Uh, then we have a teacher, uh, Mrs. White here. She's uh, very she likes to do creative writing, so she wrote a series of short stories on her blog, one that got picked up and featured in the New York Times. So again, that's, that's my idea for the Blogger Cafe. These students who want to have that voice, that authentic audience, they can come into the Innovation Center on their time, grab a Chromebook, sit down, and they can read other people's blogs, or blog to their heart's content. Book snaps. You guys know book snaps? Book snaps are awesome. How many of you have ever done a book snap? No? Yes? No? Well, the inventor of book snaps is here. Her name's Tara Martin. Follow her on Twitter. She's great. She's very approachable. She's just a total sweetheart. I did a Google Hangout with her, and she taught me all about book snaps, and I've been running with it ever since. So, book snaps. You take a picture of what you're reading with, with, uh, <clears throat> with Snapchat, and you use the different Snapchat tools to kind of annotate your claim and back up your ideas and opinions of what you're reading. You find those aha moments when you read. Well, I thought, hey, how about we do this? Not all my kids have Snapchat, but they all have Google Drawings, part of their Google Suite account. So they'll take a picture with their Chromebook on the, with the webcam of the page they're reading, and then they put it into Google Drawings, and then they circle the part that they found interesting, and they use the text tool to annotate, to annotate their, uh, um, and add more to, to maybe make it a claim. And then, they, then I tell them, all right, you're, you're going to open up a new tab, you're going to go to Google, and you're going to search some PNG stickers, and you're going to put them on there to really jazz it up. So the students submit this through Google Forms, and then I put, and it doesn't matter what subject or what book they are, I have a page for each one, and it's a lot of management. It's like that, it's not easy, but it's, it's fun. So now, we have book reviews. So if you want to read a book, if you haven't read it yet, you're not sure if you want to read it, what they do, they go click on the, on the, on the book site gallery. They go to that page. 
click on the book and see when all the book steps that have been submitted for for that book. And that will tell them, hey, that book is interesting. I like what that person said, and now I want to read it. You can do this with your class. It's a simple app smash using Google Sites, using Google Drawings, and Google Forms. Very simple. It sounds a lot more complicated than I made it. Sketch notes. Well, we have some sketch notes all over, all over the place. We have a professional sketch note right here. This is awesome. Sketch notes. Students, when I started about three months ago, kind of a sketch notes revolution in our middle school and high school, the teachers love it. The kids, the engagement, and the empowerment of taking ownership of their notes is great. So students now do their sketch notes. I have a scanner in the Innovation Center. If they think that their sketch note is worthy to go in the sketch notes gallery so they can share their notes and learning with the school and the public, they scan it. They upload to Drive, and they submit it through a Google form, and I curate them by subject, by, uh, by subject, grade level, or whatever lesson that, that, that they took the sketch notes for. It's pretty cool. Social Media Center, uh, again, I want students to uh, practice digital citizenship. I you know, really need them to do that, and I want them to create a learn how to create a positive digital footprint, because we know that if they don't do, if they don't do that, then they, they can uh, be denied employment, denied college admission. Again, I want the students to take ownership of the school's social media, because if this, we don't have a positive school social media presence, some angry parent might do that for us. I want the kids to take ownership of it. Cardinal Tech Squad, I'm gonna empower students to help their, their peers, their teachers and even parents. They'll, they'll provide uh, support for G Suite apps, as you can see listed up there uh, during the day, um, on their free time, and even on student events, they're gonna set up a booth to help people with their Google Suite accounts. YouTuber crew, I want kids creating content, not consuming. Most of our kids sit up there on YouTube watching a lot of things that just entertain them. I want them being the ones creating the content. Uh, we have about six students who've already signed up, and it's not even official yet, but they're making their own uh, YouTube videos. And one of my favorite ones is the bottom left, which says Edgy Needy TV. He's an aspiring boxer. He puts all his videos of him boxing. And since he did that, kids started seeing it, and all of a sudden, he's, he's almost like a celebrity on campus now. The kids want to, they, they want to hear about his fights. So it's, it's really awesome. So again, a lot of kids join, joining in this one. So they're, they're creating the content, not consuming. We have a picture up there of some ninth grade PE teachers, um, certain students, that after their badminton matches in a, in a class tournament, they would do a sports center a reflection on their match, and they uploaded it to YouTube. It was great, great day. Uh, for teachers, a variety of ways for the teachers in my district to get, to get involved. Uh, show them how to get connected with the uh, Connected Classrooms workshop on Google Plus where they can then uh, find uh, mystery hangouts to connect their classrooms with ones all over the country. I show them how to plan with the four C's in mind. And one of the cool ways that, that they plan, I don't have to go trolling for work saying, hey, you know what, um, can I come into your classroom? They can see on my website, I'll show you a screenshot in a second, where they see my calendar and then they have a form, wherever they fit in, they fill out the form, name and date, and they book themselves automatically. It's a great little app smash. So again, uh, when, they, when they want to book me to plan and come into their classroom and help them out or bring them into the Innovation Center itself, there's five different lesson plan models all available on Google Docs. All they have to do is make a copy and start uh, start planning, and then I'll make an appointment with them, and we sit down and we work on it together. Um, it's really cool how they, uh, the, the, uh, the extension, or sorry, the add-on that I use for, to, uh, to, for them to book me on, on my calendar is called Event-O-Matic. It's a great little uh, add-on to uh, Google Sheets, where when you put the questions for time and date, they'll, it'll populate your calendar. Real, very simple to use. So as you can see, I use a lot of Google Forms. Google Forms is the way to automate, the way I manage this, uh, this idea. So what I do, uh, the way to manage it, creating filters in Gmail. Because every form, I set it up where it's gonna email me upon submission, that's gonna blow up my inbox. My phone's gonna be buzzing all day. So what I do, I create a filter, it bypasses the inbox, and it goes into the appropriate uh, label in Gmail. And I set a reminder every day or two to go check it and see all the latest submissions are so the work doesn't pile up. Again, it's a lot easier said than done, but once you kind of uh, you find your groove, it works out pretty well. So, <clears throat> we're gonna, so it comes about to the end here, so we're gonna start having some questions. I know I told you it was gonna be like a drinking water out of a fire hose. There's a lot of layers. I wasn't lying, it's an onion on steroids. 
many layers. So I'm gonna open up the floor. If you have any any questions, ideas, or feedback, you'd be glad to uh, to answer them. So I'll leave you with this: uh, the uh, Can I Kick It thing. Uh, I'm a big fan of a tribe called Quest, and as you can tell, and I want my students in at the high school and middle school asking their teachers, and the teachers have them sitting in boring rows. We call that cemetery style. I did that back in the 1890s. Okay. Okay. I want them to ask the teachers, hey, teacher, can I kick it? And the answer is yes, you can. So when I ask you, I want you guys to ask me the question. On three, ready? One, two, three. Can I kick can I it? it? Yes, you can. <laughs> so any uh, questions, comments, feedback, and open the floor for, for you guys. So the way to get to your presentation is through that QR code? Uh, yes. It's not, okay. it's not, it's not working. It's too far away. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, I'll, uh, I'll meet up with you at the end and we'll, 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 we'll get you set up. Uh, um, well, I can walk up there. Can we walk up there? Yeah, you can't cool. read it. You can't read it. It's a URL. URL. You know what? Let me go back to the first slide. The first slide had it. I had a short URL there. Let you know. There you go. 